Hey there do-it-yourself technicians. Today we're going to look at some options around diagnosing a dead desktop PC. Computers die. It happens. It's true. It's sad. To be honest, I've probably seen more than most people. The big question is, how dead is it? Is it worth fixing? And if it is, how do I fix it? Because every machine is different, it's really hard to say what will work for you and your dead computer. But I'm going to give you a bunch of things to look for and help you diagnose your system. This is the machine that triggered this video. An older HP desktop computer that simply wouldn't turn on. A bit of solid detective work showed this, the auxiliary power connector from the power supply to the motherboard. It's a little scorched and brown. Although, to be honest, the socket on the other end didn't show any real signs of damage. There are two ways you can look at this. You can put in a new power supply and see if the system will boot up. Or you can just say, hmm, this machine's about seven or eight years old and probably not that much use for anything, even if I could get it to work again. Let's pull the drive out, see what we can recover, and then send the whole lot off to e-waste. This happens a lot with older machines. It might also happen on the main 24-pin motherboard connector. Another sign that becomes really obvious when you start looking for it is these capacitors on the motherboard that have given up their life and spewed their guts out. Or maybe they're just bolting at the top, but realistically they're probably not doing the job and that's what has caused the computer to die. Here are some surface mount resistors that have died. All of these are motherboard causes. If it's a newish machine, you might want to attempt a warranty. Call up the manufacturer, let them know what the problem is, and they'll give you a RA, or return authorization. You can send it in, hopefully they'll send you back another one relatively quickly. If it's a bit older, then it's probably time for a new motherboard or possibly even a new machine. Now, it is technically possible to source new capacitors and replace them on the board, but it's rarely worth the time and effort. It's a lot of fiddly work. If we're looking outside computers and it's a device that's irreplaceable or maybe even has sentimental value, then it might be possible or worth it. To be honest, if it was my old Coco and you can see all about it up here, then I'd probably consider doing that. But for your average motherboard that might cost somewhere between $50 and $150, it's probably not worth it. You might find it's not the motherboard that's giving you grief. This is the circuit board from a hard drive. In the past, I have actually managed to source an identical hard drive and swap the circuit board over to get the data off an old drive. But you have to be pretty careful and the match has to be pretty much exact down to the country it came from and the version and month and year of manufacture. There are, of course, companies that specialize in this sort of repair and even deeper repairs. They usually charge a hefty fee for really difficult work. In Australia, I recommend Payam Data Recovery. Here's another one that came to me a few weeks ago. The trackpad on the laptop wasn't working, and if you push down on the palm rest, often the computer would just simply reboot. Very, very odd. But when you open it up, I found this. The cable from the trackpad to the motherboard had been scrunched up during manufacture, and the wire must have got a kink in it. Over time, with heat and pressure, it's eventually shorted out and burnt the cable out. In this case, we're lucky it wasn't more serious because that cable is sitting right on the battery and a battery fire right under your wrists is really not something you want. I'm actually still searching for a replacement cable for this one. Currently, the user is happy with no trackpad using an external mouse. I just haven't been able to find an exact match for the cable. It can happen to other components too, like this graphics card. Sometimes you really have to spend some time hunting around inside the machine, looking carefully at every component. And then maybe it's not visible at all. Something may have just silently and invisibly died. All you can do is remove everything you can, strip the machine back to its barest essentials, and try it from there. You might try swapping out RAM, a graphics card, or a power supply. Sometimes, especially as the machine gets older, the best thing you can do is take the drive out, back it all up, and start again fresh. And then ship the machine off to e-waste to be recycled properly. Question of the day. Do you have an old PC tucked away in a cupboard because it stopped working and you have no idea why. Maybe it's time to dust it off and fix it up or get the data off it and e-waste the whole lot. Let me know what you do in the comments down below. And if you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. Thank you. The Tech Doctor exists to help you become your own technician. Learn about the technology, protect yourself from the bad guys and fix it when it breaks. If you're watching this on YouTube, there's some older videos you may not have seen before here and here and you can subscribe to the channel by clicking down here or to our mailing list by clicking up here. 
Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you on the next episode.